Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, graph our feasible region and then use linear program to take our objective function, which actually I didn't even write down, um, p equals 3x plus 2y, And we are going to be looking for our vertices that are going to make both constraints, but are going to provide us with a maximum uh, solution. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to take each um, graph each one of these inequalities. Now, you can see up here I have a couple compound inequalities. And basically, the best way to kind of graph your compound inequalities is just to break them up as far as x is greater than or equal to 2, x is less than or equal to 6. Notice how I kind of kept the sign the same way, but these are both two different inequalities that I can graph as well as y is greater than or equal to 1, and y is less than or equal to 5. So I'm actually creating four new inequalities. And then this one, I'll, I'll graph in slope-intercept form. So let's go ahead and graph the x ones. Um, we have the y-axis, and we have the x-axis. And to go ahead and graph these, basically what we're going to be doing is determining the values of what x and y uh, are equal to, and then determining where to shade. And I, I like to rewrite these with the variables on the left side, so then we can use the information where to shade above or below, um, or to the left or to the right, of each boundary line. So let's go and do x is greater or equal to 2. So I'm going to go over to 2, and I'm going to graph a nice little line here. Then, since x is saying x is greater than 2, that means all the points that are going to uh, maximize this graph are going to be to the right, right? Because to the left, x would be 0 or negative, which would be less than. Then I go x has to be less than or equal to 6. So I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And all values that are going to be less than 6 would be all points to the left. So now I have a you know, feasible region between these two vertical lines. Now let's go ahead and do the y coordinates. I have y is greater than 1. So I go up on the y axis. I go over to 1. And I create a nice little horizontal line. Values that are going to be greater than 1 are going to be going up. And then my last one is y is less than or equal to 5. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make a nice little horizontal line here. And then I go ahead and choose points facing down for what y is less than or equal to. So now you can see I have this nice little, uh, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have this square here that's going to be my feasible region. But I still have one more graph. Um, that I want to want to graph. So to do that, I'm going to rewrite this in slope intercept form. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to graph the slope intercept form. I'm going to graph this in intercept form. And intercept form means you just put 0 in for x to find the y-intercept, put 0 in for y to find the x-intercept. And this is a fairly basic equation that if you put 0 for one of the variables, you see that the other variable is equal to um, is going to be equal to 8. So my graph here is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now I go ahead and connect this, these two intercepts. And what would be best to understand also, though, actually to put this in slope intercept form, this actually might be helpful for you. If I do y is less than or equal to negative x plus 8, that's going to be helpful because we know that the slope is going down 1 over 1. So if I start at 8, I'm really going down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1, 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 over 1. And the reason why I want to do that is, first of all, we also notice that now my feasible region is going to be below this line. So you can see that our feasible region here, if I go in between my two horizontal or vertical lines, in between my two vertical lines, and below this line, you can see here is my feasible region. So what's helpful is once you have that feasible region, you know, we don't really need the rest of these lines here. That's just kind of getting in our way. All right, so now I have this nice little beautiful feasible region. And what I need to do is determine all of the vertices where our two constraint, our two our, any two lines of constraint meet to create a vertice, um, or vertex that's going to co compose all the constraints. So I have one here. There's two lines came together here, two lines came together here, here, and here. Now I'm going to go and simply list what are all of these points. So I have one, two, up one. So I have two, comma one. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, comma 1. 
I have 6, 2. I have 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 1, 2, oh, that's 2, comma 5. I have 2, 1, 2, 3, comma 5. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, so now I got all the five points. Now, to maximize or to determine my maximum vertices, all I'm simply going to do is take, go back to my objective functions. Here you see I have the points that are x and y. Plug in those points in for the x and y. And since we're looking for the maximum uh, point, we're going to plug them in and determine which one is going to give us our maximum point. So let's do 2, comma 1. That's going to say p is equal to 3 times 2 plus 2 times 1. And I'm going to do a little math in my head here. That's going to be 6 plus 2, which is 8. Then I'll do 6, comma 1, which p equals 3 times 6 plus 2 times 1. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. Now let's do 6 times 2. p equals 3 times 6 plus 2 times 2. And again, once you kind of get used to this, you can start doing a lot of this math you know, kind of in your head, or at least identify two or three of the points that you know, are possible uh, maximum solutions for you. 3 times 6 is going to be 18, plus 2 times 2 is 4, so that's going to be 22. So, so far, that is our maximum right that we have. Then I can do uh, 2 times 5. p equals 3 times 2 plus 2 times 5. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 times 5 is 10, which is going to equal 16. And then my last one, 3 times 5. So I have p equals 3 times 3, plus 2 times 5. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 times 5 is uh, 10, so that would be 19. And so therefore, uh, my top maximum point here is my point 6, 2, because that is a point that um, fills in the, all of the constraints as well as maximizes my objective function. Thanks.